Good morning, I'm Dr. Greg Pizzi, psychologist, relationship specialist, and board certified sex therapist. Welcome to Pizzi Psych, my channel on Facebook and YouTube. Today is Tuesday, October 6th, 2020, at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Welcome to Pizzi Psych. Today we're going to be talking about a very important subject, which is that of loving and caring for yourself. People are often confused about whether it's right or not to put oneself first. So the title of today's episode is, Are You Being Selfish Enough? Are you selfish enough? You've got to be selfish enough in this life to care about how you feel. Because how you feel determines your health, both emotionally and physically, your experiences, your ability to do almost anything, and it will um, basically is your life because our feelings are our experience and how we feel is the way we live. So that's why today we're going to be talking about are you being selfish enough and why it's not bad or sinful to put yourself first and the need to focus on yourself rather than on other people first in order to be a happy and healthy person. Then we will go into the news. I have a couple, I have a news item I want to share with you guys. Of course, my sex and relationship tip, gratitude moment, and a mindfulness affirmation for a positive day ahead. This is my live cast, my 17th episode, and I welcome you to my uh, program today. Those of you, um, tuning in for the first time welcome if not please like and subscribe to my page i'm dr greg pizzi psychologist relationship therapist and board certified sex therapist so um from now on my live cast will be once a week on tuesday mornings um i shoot for 9 a.m and i know that i'm not always on time so thank you for your patience and flexibility however my live cast is now scheduled for tuesday mornings every week at 9 o'clock a.m. A little bit about me. I'm a psychologist, relationship coach, and a sex therapist. I'm a student of the Law of Attraction. And those of you who aren't familiar with the Law of Attraction should really check out, um, uh, well, anything about the Law of Attraction, but most particularly Abraham Hicks publications. And I will put the link uh, below. Uh, for Abraham Hicks uh, publications, my main mentor in this area, um, a lot to be learned, a lot to be, a lot to um, discover about myself, my about life, about how this universe operates through the understanding of the law of attraction. Um, I've recently focused my psychology interest and practice on sociolinguistic psychology, which is helping people connect in their relationships through the analysis of language, how our language determines our experience. My website is Dr. P, uh, excuse me, www.pizzypsych.com as indicated below. Uh, if you want to reach me, feel free to message me there um, on the message us button at the bottom of each page on the website. In the news, from in, coming from the daily teachings of the secret app, the secret app, action is a word that can imply work to some people. It sounds like doing something. It sounds like work or something that's hard, taking action. However, what we call inspired action doesn't feel like work at all. The difference between inspired action and just any old action is this. Inspired action is when you're acting to receive. Okay? If you're in an action to try and make something happen, or you're trying to change something, or uh, trying to effectuate something, that's where it becomes work. If you're in action to try to make something happen, then you've slipped backwards, okay? 
Inspired action, on the other hand, feels effortless. And it feels wonderful because you're actually on a frequency of receiving that which you desire. Um, another way of putting that is that we should only do that which we feel like doing. Don't do something you don't want to do. Basically, that is, that is a rule for a happy life. Don't do anything you really don't want to do. Now, does that mean just don't get up in the morning and go to your job because you don't feel like it? No, it doesn't mean that. If you are going to your job and if you have that job in the first place, it's obviously because you want it. Um, so look at the things that are important to you and really evaluate and take a look at that which you've got going on. Because if you're not happy with that job, if you really don't want to be at that place, then maybe you need to take a look at what you're doing. But if you're doing something every day that you don't feel happy with, then, you know, you shouldn't be doing it, really. I mean, we should only be doing that which we feel inspired and naturally desire to do for what makes us happy. Kimberly, good morning. Good to have you here. So, um... Action is not necessarily something that has to be hard, and life does not have to be hard. We don't have to suffer and sacrifice in order to be happy and have that which we want in this life. By focusing on ourselves and our feelings and doing what we need to do to take the best care of ourselves possible, we put ourselves on a frequency of receiving the endless abundance of this beautiful universe that we live in. The main topic for today is, are you being selfish enough? Are you being selfish enough in your life? Do you put yourself first or do you tend to put other people first? At the beginning of your day, what's the first thing you think about? What's the first thing that you do? Um, we need to learn to put ourselves as a priority and make sure that we are okay in all aspects, be that physical, psychological, uh, medical, uh, spiritual, um, with regard to our surroundings. We need to make sure that we're okay before we embark on anything else that we do. We are our own priority. Like they say on the airplanes, Right? Everybody knows this. What is it that they say on the airplane when you're going through the safety check, the security demonstration at the beginning of the flight? What do they say if there's an emergency and there's an oxygen mask that pops down in front of your face? What do you do first? It doesn't say first make sure everybody around you has their oxygen mask on and is sealed and tightly convenient and comfortable and everybody in the row in front of you and behind you and next to you has their oxygen mask on and then you go and grab yours and put yours on no no first put on your own oxygen mask first then assist others that's right kim take care of yourself we have to take care of ourselves it's all wrong when people think that you're supposed to be sacrificing and always giving to others and doing for others and thinking for others. We have a clinical term for that in our field. That's called codependency. Codependency is where a person can't think of themselves and what they want and how they feel because they're too busy looking around and trying to figure out everybody else. They're lost. I've been there myself. I've lived that way before. And it took me years of psychotherapy, years of experience, and years of learning the hard way that I've got to put myself first because no one else is going to put me first. And if they do put me first, then that's scary. That's not healthy. So there's nothing sinful or bad or immoral about being selfish. That word selfish has gotten such a bad rap in our culture. 
the if you call some if you accuse someone of being selfish it's one of the worst things you could say to somebody but if you really think about it what is wrong with that what's wrong with making sure that you have the nutrients and the food that you need what's wrong with making sure that you get your safety and security needs what's wrong with making sure that you what well, not only is it right or wrong it's not right or wrong but it's impossible to take care of somebody else because each of us are individuals nobody else can think or feel on your behalf and you can't think or feel on behalf of someone else. So it goes to show that we can only take care of ourselves. We're only effective at taking care of ourselves. We're never effective at doing it for somebody else. Now, for those of you that may be asking, please comment if you disagree with this. Let me know what you, you know, what's your opinion of this whole conversation. I'd love to hear your take on it. So please comment below um, so I know you're here as well. Um, so, ooh, what was I just going to say? <laughs> um, so there's nothing sinful or wrong with um, looking out for number one, looking out for yourself because only then can you really be a full, complete person available for those that you love. So obviously, you know, I'm not saying here, be completely self-centered to the exclusion of any awareness of the people that are around you, or don't care about other people, or don't do things for other people. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that we've got to make ourselves a priority and make sure that we give ourselves the value and more value than we would give to any other person because they can't do what we need to do for ourselves and we can't do what they need to do for themselves. So if everybody stays in their own lane, so to speak, if everybody kind of focuses on themselves, you know, if you feed yourself, if you get your own water, if you get your own clothes, and everybody's doing that, then we're going to have a better time together. We're we're all we're not going to be angry at each other because well you didn't do this for me or you didn't do that for me or why didn't you give me your food or why didn't you buy me that? It's kind of like you know we're all here as grown ups. It's like in school, they teach you, you know, get your own lunchbox, take your own sandwich out, wash your own hands, um, get your own pencils and, and, and paper, uh, clean up after yourself. You know, this is taking care of ourselves. And that's why there's nothing immoral or wrong or bad or selfish about, I mean, or, or, or sinful about being selfish because selfish just simply means that you're self-oriented you're self-focused and that's the only way we should be we shouldn't be worrying about what other people think we shouldn't be worried about what other people are doing it's none of our business so let me know what you think about this how do you handle it are you being selfish enough? Do you have a tendency to think about others and do for others before you do for yourself? Do you have a tendency to put other people's needs before your own? Thank you, Jessica. We all need to learn to be more selfish. It's hard sometimes because we tend to feel that there's something bad about it, that it's wrong, or we're not supposed to think of ourselves first. and. We get scolded for it, for doing that. So it's tough at first. Um, I'm sure that, you know, th think about this example. Think about an example. Have you ever had somebody try to guilt you into doing something because they feel that you should be putting themselves first? Have you ever felt guilty or been felt manipulated because someone... Um, uh, you know, commented or observed that you're doing what you want rather than what they want. Or um, if somebody says to you, well, you're being selfish because 
you're only thinking of yourself. So then what, what are they basically saying? Oh, so you want me to put you first? Like you want me to do what you want, but I'm the selfish one. It, it doesn't make sense. You know, same in, in, in a relationship or in a romantic relationship or a committed relationship. When one partner expects the other to focus on them, do what they want and not do what the other person wants. Okay, if you guys are still there, I just got cut off due to a technical problem. So can you please somebody comment or let me know if you're there and can see me right now because I just lost power <laughs> and um, I went off. So if you're still there, please let me know. I'm just going to keep going in the meantime. Um, I appreciate your questions and i thank you for your comment jessica where you admit that you tend to think of others first a lot and i hope that you're learning how to deal with that i hope that you're learning how to put yourself first and love yourself more because this is definitely about self-love it's about self-care we have to take care of ourselves both physically and emotionally uh, whenever possible. Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate that. Okay. So, um, we need to make priorities. We need to make ourselves a priority. Hi, Joanne. Welcome. Thank you so much. All right. We're back on. So, you don't owe people anything. You owe yourself. You owe it to yourself to love yourself. You owe it to yourself to deserve and know that you deserve the best of everything that this life has to offer. You don't owe people an explanation for the things that you do that you need to do for yourself. And especially when something that's going on is harming you in any way, you have a right to set a limit, to back off, to back away. And if something doesn't feel good to you, you don't have to do it at all. I strongly suggest that you put yourself first and make yourself such a priority of self-love that you don't do anything that doesn't feel good and right to you. Thank you for your questions and your comments. Please let me know if there's anything else that you would like for me to, uh, you know, comment on uh, and discuss in the future. Moving on to our daily relationship and sex tip. Charles Hanel, who lived from 1866 to 1949, said that the real secret of power is consciousness of power. The real secret of power is consciousness of power, right? So, in other words, the true power in having power is not in the power itself or anything you can do with the power. It's knowing that you've got that power knowing that you've got that power. 
Be aware of the power you have in your relationship and all your relationships. Don't leave everything up to the other person. Don't let them take all the control and also don't assume all of the control and responsibility yourself. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Kimberly, for your sharing. Be aware of your ability to experience what you want through your focus, through the things that you concentrate on. You are worthy of love. You have so much to offer. Anyone who is around you, anyone who wants to be associated with you is so fortunate and blessed to have you in their life. Don't doubt yourselves. Okay, guys, don't doubt yourself. Be confident. Speak confidently. For those of you that are interested in receiving my free relationship report card, go to my website, which is pizzypsych.com, listed below. Go there and use the blue Message Us button. There's a button at the bottom of every page to send me a message. Send me your email address and ask for my free relationship report card, and I'll send it out to you guys. That's my free gift uh, to all of you. Moving on to our gratitude moment of the day. What are you grateful for today? Comment below. I'd love to hear. This is your chance to share. What are you grateful for? Eddie, good morning. Great to hear from you. What are you grateful for today, Eddie? Do you mind sharing with us? I know you're a very grateful person in general, but I'd love to hear um, what, are, what, what are you currently feeling most appreciative and grateful for today? All of you guys that are on board today, please, what are you grateful for? What do you feel most appreciative of at this moment? What would you like to send out there into the universe um, and let us know, please. Let's hear it. We can never be grateful enough. On next time, on upcoming episodes of my live cast here on Pizzi Psych, we're going to be having new exciting topics every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. As I said earlier, no more twice a week. It's 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 going to be better for me to do it once a week on Tuesdays. That way, I can be most consistent. Eddie, you're grateful for your friends. Thank you so much. And I'm sure that they're extremely grateful for you because you are a good friend. I have an amazingly grateful woman coming up in a very, uh, very near future upcoming episode. A woman from Palm Beach County, Florida, who is the epitome of gratitude. You're gonna hear her wonderful and amazing story I'm going to try to get her on for next week or the week after, definitely this month. Stay tuned for this beautiful inspiration of a human being. Kimberly, your health, you're grateful for your health. Jessica, you're grateful for your friends and your dogs. You recently adopted two puppies, three months old each, brothers. So now you have Francis, who is 13 years old, French Bulldog, and two French Bulldog beautiful puppies in your house. Now I'm curious, did you name them yet? What are the puppies' names? Please write their names below. As last time I talked to you, they had no names. Kimberly, thank you so much. Me too. I'm grateful for mine. Eddie, I'm grateful for mine as well. It allows us to live this beautiful life. Being sober allows us to enjoy and receive love and not push it away and not um, sabotage ourselves from being happy. Now I'm going to cry. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Doesn't take much nowadays anyway. <laughs> I love you guys and I'm so grateful for all of you. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to share and do this with you and for your trust in me as a professional and your respect they still have no names oh my god okay <laughs> that's too funny jessica anyway i'm gonna move on now last but not least affirmation affirmation of the day i am worthy of receiving all the gifts the universe has to offer repeat with me guys i am worthy of receiving all the gifts this universe has to offer. 
Joanne, you're grateful for the strength and wisdom you have found through the struggles that this life has brought you. Hugs to all of you guys. Thank you for following. Please share with those of you that you feel would benefit from this work that I do. Once again, everybody, I'm Dr.